chapter 23 of Genesis. The portion is called Chaye Sarah. Chaye Sarah. And uh, who other than Rabbi would like to respond to what the title means? Sarah Live. The life of Sarah. The life of Sarah. There you go. Because we know the, the word high. High is life. Okay, as in Lachayim, when we toast. Amen. I could never understand why they called it the life of Sarah when all it talks about is her death. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, guys, we'll see you next week. Why yeah. didn't they call it the death of Sarah? Inquiring minds want to know. That's a good question, Rabbi. I'm glad you opened with that question. Celebrating see, her life. Well, we're celebrating her life, but it's a question of not just the uh, it reflects on her life and uh, and why she was remembered. You have to remember that this is the only parasha that's named after a woman. Say that again. This is the only parasha that's named after a woman. Okay, so does that give her uh, a level of importance? Absolutely. Absolutely. Absolutely and absolutely. Okay. So anyway, um, but uh, it is, it does begin after her death, okay? So, um, it, but it, exactly right, it is the life of Sarah, but that's, again, that's how it begins. Sarah's life was 127 years, the years of Sarah's life. Sarah died in Kirat Arba, and in Hebron, that's in Hebron now, in the land of Canaan, Abraham came to mourn for Sarah and to weep over her. But again, as we discuss why it's important and why he chose to bury her the way he did, okay, and to see to it that everything's in order, uh, but it also reflects on the fact that Abraham was like somebody else we know getting his directions from above. Man, he was, he was, in my mind, filled with the Spirit from the very beginning when the Lord spoke to him and to his father and said, leave the land of Ur where they were. They were living in a very comfortable existence. And um, uh, he was probably sitting in his lazy boy. And all of a sudden, the Lord said, we need to get you out of here. There's someplace I have a job for you, a mission. Okay, but uh, as they began the mission, his father died and Abraham assumed the mission. Okay, I want to go back actually, because um, much of what happened before that reflects on this too. Okay, and I want to go back to the previous uh, chapter, chapter 22, which I don't think we actually got to last week. No, okay. no. Right? No. It was the binding of Isaac and Talk about profound. What, what? Yakida. Yakida. Okay, the binding of Isaac. And so um, it's one of those things that will rock your boat. But let's pray. Uh, but we just come before you right now. Father, we just lift you up. We exalt you. And we just take great joy in studying the words that you have bestowed upon us, Lord. This love letter that you've given us that allows us to understand your character and what it is and how it is that you want us to be so that we can attempt to be sanctified, be holy as you are holy. So we lift you up and thank you. We see in your lessons, Lord, step by step by step as they came out of Egypt, and began the, the track through the desert and all these things that happened, Lord, uh, that are step by step the process that leads us to exactly where we are right now. So we lift you up and exalt you. We ask that your Ruach, your Holy Spirit, Lord, yeah. just fall upon everything that we say, that we do, and every word just pop off the page so that we have a clear understanding as to what's going on here and what it is that we need to glean from this lesson, Lord. So we just praise you and we thank you. We ask for your blessings today already on the service, on the bringing of the word, on everything that we do, Lord. 
because we do it as unto you. And we lift you up and thank you in the precious name of Yeshua HaMoshiach Tzikim, of Yeshua, our Messiah, and our righteousness. Amen, amen, and amen. Now it was after these things that God tested Abraham. And he said to him, and again, I'm in Genesis 22. He made me. He made me, he said. What does that mean? Here I am. Here, Here I am. am I. Then he said, I take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on, on one of the mountains about which I will tell you. But Abraham all of a sudden decided, what are you talking about? I'm not going to do that. Okay, forget about it. Is that what he did? No. No, not at all. Without a second thought, he followed directions. But then, why? Why did why? he follow directions? Relationship. That's the question. Relationship. Okay, relationship. Anybody else? Can you repeat that? Why did he follow God's instruction without even questioning it? Yes. It's really important. He had faith that uh, he was not going to kill him. And if he did, he was still going to be well, the son yeah. of promise. We are jumping the gun a little bit. But, oh. Yeah, absolutely but, right. You are right. Uh, but again, the same way that he left, the same way that he was he left where he was, okay, and proceeded, he was still moving on faith. Hey. On the direction of uh, from above, was it but he also knew that he knew that he knew that one or two things would happen here. Yeah, but we're not there yet. <laughs> yeah, okay, we're talking about Akida, right? Yeah, we're I getting. That's where we were. It's important, yeah, but we haven't read it yet. And I want it. I want the reading. Okay. I want the reading to uh, to say that. So Abraham got up early in the morning. This is verse three. Saddled his donkey, took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son. He split wood for the burnt offering and got up and went to the place about which God had told him. On the third day, imagine that. On the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place from a distance. Abraham said to his young men, sit yourselves down here with the donkey. As for me and the young man, we'll go over there, worship and return to you. You hang out here. We'll be back. Well, but he, this, this is amazing. That's he's the point that I was faith. making. Right he's here. speaking faith because he's trusting him that he is going to return with his son. I mean, you're saying it out of your mouth. He's going to do one of two things, as Rabbi started to say. Yes, good morning. And he started to say, either... You told me what, what's going to happen, what I'm supposed to be doing. But either, okay, either, um, either he's going to provide a substitute and or he's going to resurrect him from the dead. One of the Amen. Other. Amen. Amen. Then Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and put it on Isaac, his son, and handed, and he handed in his hand, he took the fire and the knife. So the two men walked on together. Then Isaac said to Abraham, his father, my father, then he said, I am, here I am, my son. And he said, look, I mean, he said the same thing that, that the Lord, when, when the Lord called him, he named me, he said, here I am, my son. He said, look, here's the fire and the wood, but where's the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham said, God will provide. Adonai Yira. Amen. Adonai Yira. Some people say Jehovah Jira. Wrong words. Okay. Jehovah is a non word. Yahweh is something else again. Okay. Some people mistakenly, some people mistakenly say uh, Jehovah. Um, God will provide for himself a lamb for a burnt offering, my son. Then the two men walked together, and he came to the place uh, about which God had told him. And Abraham built an altar, laid out the wood, bound up Isaac, his son. Do you hear Isaac screaming? No mention. 
could you imagine what how deep it is, what the father felt and what the son felt? The deepness of the son being submitting himself to that. I mean, it's a foretelling of what happens in the future, but the depth of both of those men, both the child and the and the man, Amen. is amazing. Let's backtrack a little further. Where's mom in all of this? She's back at the campsite. She's back at the campsite. What is she thinking, talking about the greatness of Sarah? Because we're not in, in, into that book yet. Chaye Sarah. But what is she thinking when husband and son go off together? Didn't she have a word that God will protect and God will provide? And she had to abide in that word and her faith and trust in God. She probably knew what was about to happen. Well, no, 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 no idea. Not, not at the time. I don't think she. Uh -huh. Not at the time. If she knew she. But what did she have? What had she already exhibited in her relationship with her husband? Trust. 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 Yeah. Okay, a really critical thing to mm -hmm. understand. Yes, we're studying Chaye Sarah. We're not quite there yet, but at the same time. We're talking about a woman who exhibited loyalty to her husband. Okay, and we go on to see, I mean, even to the point where where he lied and passed off, asked her to pass him off as her brother, not her husband, to Pharaoh, to Abimelech, mm -hmm. okay, to uh, and 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 the Lord interceded in those situations. But again, here she is wondering. Where is all of this? Where is this going? Okay, we don't see that in her, but later we can begin to start to comprehend. Okay, so 13, then Abraham looked out of his eyes and behold, there was a ram. Oh, thank you. Just caught in the thicket bushes by its horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. Can I hear a hallelujah? hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> say it, yes. And we have experienced that in our life. Today. Yes. Amen. Yes. What's another name for Mount Moriah? So it is a hard thing, but uh, at the end, you're free to grow. Um, but isn't that with it? Specifically, where the dome of the Mount. That's the Temple Mount. Yeah. Temple Mount. Where... That's Mount Zion, Mount, Zion. Mount Moriah, mm -hmm. same place. Mm -hmm. That's where the Third Temple will be built. The very same place. The dome of Mount. I can't help but think, though, I did a teaching once upon a time uh, on where Yeshua was in every book of the Bible. How many were over here for that? You were, okay. But in Genesis, Yeshua is the ram at Abraham's altar. Amen? Amen. It goes on, that whole, the reading. In Exodus, he's the Passover lamb. In Leviticus, he's the high priest. And it goes on. In Numbers, he's the cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. And in Joshua, he's the scarlet thread out Rahab's window. And in Judges, he is our judge. Should I go on? In every book of the Bible, he's ever present. Amen. So, again, there was the ram in the thicket. Adonai Yira, as it is said today, on the mountain, Adonai will provide, verse 15. Then the angel of Adonai called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, by myself, I swear, it is a declaration of Adonai because you have done this thing and you did not withhold your son, your only son. I will richly bless you and bountifully multiply your seed like the stars of heaven, like the sand that is on the seashore. And your seed will possess the gate of his, of his enemies. In your seed, all the nations of the earth will be blessed because you obeyed my voice. Amen? Amen. 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 There he is. Here I am. All right. This is not taken, right? No. no. Okay. Okay. Thank, you. You. Thank you. Then Abraham returned to his young men and got up 
and went together to Beersheba. Abraham dwelled in Beersheba. Verse 20. Now it was these things that it was told to Abraham. Look, Milka has borne sons to Nahor, your brother. Anybody know anybody named Milka? Okay. Yes. I do too. Okay. Yeah, I, I you know it was very funny because it wasn't until after I had known that person that I read her name here. Okay. But in English it's Micah, right? No. Milka. But it pronounces Micah. No. Milka is Milka. Also born sons to Nahor, your brother Uz, his firstborn, uh Buz, his brother, Kemul, the father of Aram, Chesed. And we know what Chesed means. Mercy. Mercy, loving kindness, what God is. Amen. Grace. Grace. Hazo, Pildash, Yid, Yild, Laf, and Betuel. And Betuel fathered Rebecca. These eight Milka bore to Nahor, Abram's brother. He, his concubine, whose name was Ruma, also bore Teba, Gaham, Tahash, and Ma'aka. And now we're at Parashah Chayi Sarah, just to give you a little background. Okay. All right. So, again, as we'll hear later, especially in commentary, this whole thing begins after Sarah's death. And Sarah's life, as we said, was 127 years old. Would you pick it up at verse 3, Sheila? Yes. Then Abraham rose from before his dead one and spoke to the sons of Het, Het. Het saying, I am an outsider and a sojourner among you. Give me a gravesite among you so that I may bury my dead from before my presence. The sons of Chet answered Abraham, saying to him, Listen to us, my Lord. You are a prince of God among us. Bury your dead in the best of our graves. None among us will withhold his grave from you to bury your dead one. Then Abraham got up and bowed down to the people of the land, to the sons of Chet. And spoke with them, saying, If you are of a mind to let me bury my dead from before my presence, listen to me. Plead with Ephron, Ephron, son of Zophar, on my behalf, that he may give me the cave of Machpelah that belongs to him, that is at the end of his field. At the full price, let him give it to me in your midst for a grave site. Now Ephron was sitting in the midst of the sons of Chet, and Ephron, the Hittite, Hittite, Answer, yeah, answer of Abraham in the ears of the sons of Chet. All those who enter the gate of his city saying, No, my Lord, listen to me. The field, I hereby give it to you. Also the cave that is in it, I hereby give it to you. In the eyes of the sons of my people, I hereby give it to you. Bury your dead one. Okay. So what are you getting from this? About what are they, how do they, they uh, what is their opinion about Brother Abraham? <laughs> They're doing the dance here. <laughs> and the price for the cave has not yet been established, but it's about to be. And Abraham was smart enough to understand that unless he had a deed to the cave, but it would never be his. Again. So now the negotiations begin in earnest. Yes, in earnest, yes. And watch how he sets the price. I wrote in my bargain, such a deal. <laughs> such a deal. <laughs> yeah. This is the first recorded case of bundling in the Bible. There you go. <laughs> bundling means bargaining. bargaining. He's bargained with God many times. Yeah, but I mean with the, another person. Right. To yeah, make yeah. a business yeah. deal. But he's a bargaining person. Well, this is where we, who he's else a negotiator. Who else is a negotiator uh, in parenthesis litigator? <laughs> Okay, who else do we Moshe. see? Moshe. Moshe. The best. The best. Okay, Harvard Law. Okay. Cum laude. <laughs> so, um, but he also knew how, he dealt with them before, he also knew how they, they, uh, the Gentiles are, and they were not trustworthy. As far as if he didn't pay a price for it, they could come back later and do whatever they chose to do. Okay, he did not ultimately want to be beholden to them. Mm -hmm. In any way, shape, or form. Okay, so it would have come back at him. Can I just add a bit yeah. small? And also, God wants us to purchase the land because this is an eternal thing between the Jewish people and that land. 
and there's a connection. Even Joseph had his bones taken out of Egypt back to the land. You know, as us Christians, we would think, okay, we're going to heaven. Uh, I don't need my body anymore. But God has the land. He wants us here on the earth in the land. Mm. Also, it's it's interesting to look at the city of Hebron today, mm -hmm. which is in the so-called West Bank. And, and see the biblical connection of the Jewish people to the land. And the first thing that happened to this cave at Machpelah it, within the last hundred years was that the Arab population where the shrine was located painted the top of the dome green, which is, if you know, about Palestinian history, that's the color of their flag. Right. And they have uh, persecuted the small Jewish population that's lived in Hebron for 3,000 years. And that mosque that they erected there was supposed to be for the descendants of Abraham. Mm -hmm. And Hebron is a very dangerous city today. Mm -hmm. So just a little extra insight. I think also in Hebrew, the word deeded, when it says a deeded, also can mean covenant. And so I think that's in that it's a covenant, that that's part of the inheritance Precisely. of the land that's a covenant. For a covenant that was cut. Right. Okay, let's pick it up. 13. 13. Then Abraham bowed down before the people of the land. Oh, that's 12, go ahead. And spoke to Ephron in the ears of the people of the land, saying, But if only you would please listen to me, I hereby give the price of the field. Accept it from me that I may bury my dead one there. So Ephron answered Abraham, saying to him, My lord, listen to me, a land worth 400 shekels of silver, which what is that between me and you? Okay, He's so. establishing the price. <laughs> okay. You have to say that. You have to say what was just read with a certain kind of dialect. <laughs> yes, okay. go ahead. My lord, listen to me. A land worth 400 shekels of silver? What is that between you and me? Bury your dead one. Okay. Is that a lot of money? Or? It was it wasn't a question of the money, it was a question of he's saying on one hand, take it, it's yours. Okay, we know who you are, we trust you. But on the other hand, you should know what I'm giving up for you. 400 shekels. 400 shekels. Listen to the next three words. Yes. Abraham heard Ephron. <laughs> <laughs> so Abraham. So Abraham weighed out to Ephron the silver that he had spoken of in the ears of the sons of Het. He didn't even bargain with them. He didn't say, no, it's not worth 400. It's worth 300. Okay. He just boom, 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 boom. Laid it out. Go ahead. 400 shekels of silver at the merchant's rate. Now Ephron's field that is in the Machpelah Mach next to Mamre, yep. the field and the cave that is in it, and all the trees that are in the field and all its surrounding territory was handed over to Abraham as a purchased possession in the eyes of the sons of Heth, Heth before all those who entered the gate of the city. Okay, no arguments. Done before the witnesses. Witnesses, yes. Okay. All the witnesses. And all the witnesses were there. Okay. So, um, okay. And, and that's very, very clear there. Okay. Chapter 24. Okay. Uh, now we jump to again. And again, let's run back. Again, the parasha is called Chayi Sarah, but it begins after her death. But it's the importance of what he's doing here and the uh, respect that he's paying to her, uh, buying the, the, the land for, and the, uh, the tomb, okay? But under, um, I just uh, made some notes here. Her obedience to her husband is what brought us to this point. Uh, somebody go with me to 1 Peter 3. 1 Peter 3, verse 5 and 6. I somehow have an affinity for Peter. I don't know why. But... <laughs> it's a rock thing. The rock thing. Yeah. 
but it All wasn't right. upon Peter. Okay. Anyway, First Peter three five and six. Who's got it? Paul. Paul's got First Peter. Peter three five and six. For this is the way the <laughs> way the holy women who put their hope in God used to beautify themselves long ago, being submitted to their own husbands, just as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. You have become her daughter by doing what is good and not fearing intimidation. Amen. 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 So again, a reference back here in Peter to uh, <laughs> back to Peter, uh, back to Abraham, and, and uh, how uh, what respect was given to her when he was told to leave where they were from the land of Ur and go to this wilderness where wherever they were, he was being sent. Did she protest? Yeah. No. Out of respect for him, she just went. Amen. And um, and again, even though she was married to him, ultimately she was his sister, half sister, half sister. Right. So, but two times he had to lie specifically for his own sake, for his own. He skin. didn't have to. He chose to. He chose yeah. to. He chose to. Okay, to lie when she went in to be part of the harem for both Pharaoh and Abimelech. Okay, and but she, again, in her desire to be loyal to her husband, fortunately, the Lord interceded. Amen. In those cases, and but did not does, allow. But what does that tell us about Abraham? Does it not tell us that he was flawed? Yeah, he's a man. Was Moses flawed? Absolutely. You mean to tell me that God can use flawed people? Hallelujah. My, there's hope for me. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's probable people for possible things. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Wow. So, following all of that and following the respect and knowing what the Lord uh, has has uh, commanded Abraham. Well, let's look at verse 24. And this is the courting of Rebecca. Okay, now let's find out about this. Okay. Now Abraham was old, advanced in years, and, and Adonai blessed Abraham in everything. Then Abraham said to his servant, the oldest of his household, who managed everything that belonged to him, now put your hand under my thigh so that I may may make you take an oath by Adonai, the God of heaven and the God of earth, that you will not take a wife for my son from among the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I am dwelling. On the contrary, to my land and to my relatives, you must go and get a wife for my son, Isaac. Okay. Comments. I have a testimony. Yes, sir. You have a testimony. Yes. Amen. I waited uh, 17 years and was patiently waiting on the Lord for that verse right there. I couldn't find a cousin, but I had to go to a distant land to find a wife. <laughs> so, thank you, Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, girl, you're too much. And she's from where? Uh, New Jersey. New Jersey. <laughs> no. So, that's the book in New York. <laughs> Santa Domingo. Santa Domingo. Santa Domingo. Santa Domingo. Yeah. Santa Domingo. Santa Domingo. Yes, she's in school there, right? Right. Oh, uh, yes. Amen. I didn't have a camel, though. I had to fly. <laughs> <laughs> but somebody had to feed those camels. Anyway, um, okay, let's pick it up. Verse five. five. Yes. But the servant said to him, suppose the woman were the woman were unwilling to follow after me to this land. Should I then have your son go back to the land you came from? Abraham said to him, see to it that you don't return my son there. Adonai, the God of heaven, who took me from my father's house and from my native land, and who spoke to me and made a pledge to me, saying, To your seed I will give this land. He will send his angel before you, and you will take a wife for my son from there. If the woman is not willing to follow after you, then you will be free from this oath of mine. Okay, what are we talking about here? Give me one word that's reflected here in what he said. To your seed I will give this land. Covenant. Covenant. Faith. Faith. 
he will send his angel. Amen. Made it Amen. very clear. He will send his angel before you and, and you will take a wife for my son from there. Okay. Again, totally confident the same way that he was confident that uh, that he would return with his son to the men who were waiting post um, Akida. I think he also has that doubt that he tells him that an angel will go before you with that faith. He says, but if you don't find anyone, then you're released. Right. So he's like hedging it eat both ways. Right. Just in case. Right. But I, I appreciate the importance. As I got older, I appreciate the importance of listening to my mother and my father because they know what's best. So that at a younger age, we make so much mistakes doing things on our own. Maybe you did. <laughs> but in the Bible, I mean, it's so important for us to listen to our elders and because they know what's best. You know, they only they they could see things that we cannot see. So and that's why I'm kind of like experience um, what you haven't experienced yet. Exactly. Okay, and plus the great system. chins. The great what? The gray yeah. chins. Yeah. Ah, the great chins. Okay. The elders. Gotcha. Okay. Then. Well, we're in nevertheless. Where are we? Nevertheless, oh. right? On top and then column mm -hmm. on top. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless. So eight, yeah, it's part of eight. Nevertheless, you must not return my son there. Verse nine. So the servant put his hand under the thigh of Abraham, his master, and he made a pledge to him concerning this matter. What is this business under the thigh? Mm -hmm. What do you think, Barry? From what I've read, it's kind of like a... Uh, way of like making a covenant or a promise for sure. um and it's like from what i've been taught earlier on it's not the word thigh that's being used doesn't really mean thigh per se because later on it says that uh he bore children from his thigh and you don't bore children from thighs i think i wrote down where that was somewhere in, later on in genesis so it's actually that he it was a little more personal than just thigh. Right. Conceivably, even genitals. That's right. And so that's they didn't touch for right. this. Yes, it was a touch. It was personal. Yep. That, okay, this is like, okay, uh, I'm, we're, uh, as somebody. On life, say, I yeah. promise. Mm -hmm. Where does life emanate from? Right. Mm -hmm. So it literally touched his thigh or. It's yes. To close the deal. Yes. Mm -hmm. yep. to close the keep deal. in mind, this was the same servant that would have inherited everything, too. It makes sense. Precisely. Right. Okay. Yeah. Good point. Good point. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, ten. Ten. Then the servant took ten of his master's camels and left with all the best of his master's things in his hand. Then he arose and went to Aram Naharan. 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 Nahor, uh, Nahor. Go ahead. Oh, to Nahor City. Then he right. made the. Who is Nahor? That's all right, Denise. I saw it just a few minutes. <laughs> so we said at the beginning, okay, he's the brother of Abraham. Okay. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Then he made the camels kneel down outside the city by the well of water at evening time, the time for the going out to draw water. Adonai, the God of Abraham, my master, he said, please make something happen before me today and show loyalty to Abraham, my master. Look, I am standing by the spring of water and the daughters of the men of the city are going out to draw water. Now let it be that the young woman to whom I say, please tip your jar so that I may drink and she will say drink and I will also water your camels. Let her be the one you have appointed for your servant Isaac. So by this, I know, I'll know that you have shown graciousness to my master. Now, before he had finished speaking, behold, there was Re Rebecca. Imagine that. It just so happened. Yes. Uh, what a coincidence. What a coincidence is my wife would say. It's also that he's, it's interesting that he, uh, the father's telling him, look at the one who shows the most hospitality. What else about the servant can you say here? Is a very great servant, very loyal, very loyal, and especially since he could have been the one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same here with everything. And he has a lot of faith to know that God is concerned about 
Seems like he loved Abraham a lot. I yes. would say. Yeah. yeah. Indeed, like a father to him. Mm -hmm. Amen. I always thought it was interesting. It, the way he spoke it, it was almost like that wasn't his God, but he had respect for Abraham's God. And it might not be true, but it says, <laughs> and the God of Abraham. Well, yeah, he's talking about the lineage. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But you're right. Um, 15. 15. Yeah. Now, before he had finished speaking, behold, there was, Re was Rebecca, who was born to Betuel, son of Melchai, Melcha, 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 the wife of Nahor, Nah, uh, uh, Abraham's brother, going out with her jar on her shoulder. Now, the young woman was very good looking, a girl of marriageable age, and she was a virgin. She went down to the spring and filled her jar and came up. Then the servant ran to meet her and said, please let me sip a little water from your jar. So she said, drink, my lord. And she quickly lowered her jar onto her hand and gave him a drink. Now, when she finished giving him a drink, she said, I'll also draw water for your camels until they finish drinking. Imagine that. Yeah. Check. Check. <laughs> What's the thing? Check, Check the yeah. matches, right? Yeah. So completely instantaneously fulfills exactly what he said, right? So 20. So she quickly poured out her jug into the trough. 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 Ran back to the well to draw water and drew water for all his camels while the man continued to pay close attention to her, keeping silent in order to know whether or not Adonai had made his way successful. Now, after the camels had finished drinking, the man took out a nose ring of gold weighing a half shekel and two bracelets on her hands weighing 10 shekels of gold. Whose daughter are you? He said, please tell me, is there room in your father's house for us to spend the night? She said to him, I'm the daughter of Betuel, but 12. But 12, but 12, mm -hmm. son of Melchah, whom she bore to Nahor. She also said to him, there is, there is both straw and plenty of feed with us, as well as room to spend the night. Then the man bowed down and worshipped Adonai. And he said, blessed be Adonai, the God of my master Abraham, who has not forsaken his loyalty and his truth toward my master. As for me, Adonai has guided, guided me in the way to the house of my master's brothers. Amen. So he's, for all intents and purposes, doing, uh, figuratively speaking, building an altar. Mm -hmm. Right? He is acknowledging that the Lord is in control of all of this. Right? And that has answered his prayer, Abraham's prayer. Okay? Then the young woman ran. Yeah. I want me to get 20. Oh, answer Isaac's prayer, too. And Isaac's prayer. He's 40 years old. Okay. <laughs> and people think too that you know when they think of Abraham sacrificing Isaac, that Isaac was a little kid no. at that point. He was not. No, reflecting time-wise, he was probably in his 30s. Okay. So he had to agree because he could, you know, Precisely. defend himself that moment. Well, that's one of the amazing things that we talked about too. Uh, Najib is that is that um, when Abraham picked him up and put him on the altar and was about to to um, sacrifice him, that he was he wasn't screaming and yelling and kicking. I think when you have seen through the years. Like you being the parent, people, you know, and I'm putting myself in that position over and over the faith of your parent, trusting God and God coming through that this was no biggie at this point here. This is so be it, Father. You know what I'm saying? Because you've seen over the years, God, if he's doing this and you know he's being led by God, you, you trust him completely. Had to be huge trust because he knew he was curiosity. And Abraham had that. Except a knife over his body. Yeah. And Abraham about to... told the servants, We will come back to you. He knew he had to resurrect him because the promise. That's a lot told. to process. Mm -hmm. Okay? A lot to process. Some yeah, children, I mean, children would be like, I'm not going, I'm good. I'm uh, good. Yeah, <laughs> I'm good. I'm no, all <laughs> but, but the son heard his father say, to the other servant, or to the servants, we're, we're both coming back. Uh -huh. All right. He heard his father say it. So exactly. I trust what the father said. But again, you know, this is called 11th hour. 
<laughs> right? And he says, the father's got the knife held over it. Now. Yeah, but. <laughs> yeah, but. He still heard his father say, no. I think it's a special, <laughs> it's a special <laughs> moment in the Bible with Abraham and his son. They were born and set apart. Just give us this example. But again, if you go back to what we were talking about regarding the amazingness of Sarah, is that she knew when the when the angels came through on their way to Sodom and Gomorrah, one of whom was I and I, that at that point she knew she was that the child of promise was through her. <laughs> so Knowing that that's the case, and him, her father, uh, his Isaac's father and mother, bringing him up, just as you said, there had to be a amount of certain amount of transference <laughs> of his acceptance of Hashem. Amen. And he knew he was the son of promise. He knew it. That's why he had a strong faith as well. Right. But her faith but was that, not like Abraham's faith. So she did. She went on her own and did her had her own idea and. Gave Abraham another. Well, but she thought she was being. That's a good point. Okay, when she presented, <coughs> she presented yeah. Hagar, but she thought she was being doing the right thing. Yeah, helping God. Uh, yeah, helping God. Yeah. Right. Wow. <laughs> what is this? Well, she, she did. That's a good life. Right now. <laughs> Aren't we all glad that we don't do that? Why? <laughs> I'm I'm thinking of uh, our dear friend, the, the Lord uh, used me to lead him to the Lord, Joshua, oh, yeah. and his father. This was an Orthodox Jewish person, and his father was extremely Orthodox. And but when he went to temple. He went up the stairs of the temple, never went in because he wanted to serve God as an advisory capacity. That's <laughs> pretty bold. That's a, that's a true story. It's a true story. That's not a joke. Yeah. Ultimately, wow. ultimately my friend was marrying a <clears throat> Baptist believer, and uh, my friend Joshua was tossed, to say the least. Uh, but he, when he came to faith, it was like, <clears throat> I told you that story. He came to faith? What? At the Baptist church, he came to faith? Yeah. Did he lose his faith if he became an advisor to God? No, so, no, no. It was his father. Oh, his father. It felt that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the father uh, never showed up for the wedding. Right. And it, it admonished the rest it of the family. If you show up for the wedding too, you're out of here. There were 700 people at that wedding. Mm -hmm. I know because I appreciate it. None of the family. Yeah. None of the family was allowed. Yeah, he gets to yeah. heaven, he's going to see so many Baptists. And they were, neighbor. they were married <laughs> under a chuppah in the Baptist church. Interesting. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, Amy had something similar to that. Yeah. With her family. <clears throat> her her uh, uncle, who was uh, the CEO of a company out in St. Louis, he threatened members when they found out she was saved. Yeah, I don't go kind of thing. And he's not with us anymore. And, and a bunch of people from her, uh, the other side, her father's side, came to the wedding kind of thing. And that's what I'm always trying to convey to her that they were here. And now her aunt mm -hmm. is not saved. Um, Amy sent her a, a really nice card when her uncle died. And she sent a thank you to us. So there are a lot of things going on in her family, but the pressures that some that don't believe in our Messiah, yeah. they, they, they try to. And the them. irony is, John, they don't read the word. Mm -hmm. And if mm -hmm. they read anything, they read Talmud, which is the oral tradition and not the word of God. Yeah. Amen. And they, they believe what they're told and not what they read. Okay. They don't even read Torah. So, um, again, here we are, and this is why we meet and study Torah. Amen? Amen. 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 It says no what?
All right, so let's pick it up where we were. Welcome, Anna. Then the young woman ran and told her mother's house these things. Now, Rebecca had a brother and his name was Laban. And Laban ran outside to the man at the spring. As soon as he saw the, the nose ring and the bracelets on his sister's hands, and when he heard the words of Rebecca, his sister saying, thus the man said to me, he went to the man. There he was standing by the camels at the spring. So he said, come in, blessed, blessed of Adonai. Why are you standing outside when I've tidied up the house and there is room for the camels? So the man came to the house and he unloaded the camels. Straw and feed were given to the camels and water to wash his feet and the feet of the men who were with him. Food was placed before him to eat, but he said, I won't eat until I've stated my business. Okay, so what else do we know there? Okay, first of all, what do we know about their existence, their lifestyle? Okay, hospitality. Hospitality was key. Washing the feet of people that came in, even strangers. Okay, what does that say about your shoe? Sure. Did you wash feet? Yes. Okay. And Peter Sarah protested and said, you know, you don't have to wash my feet. And Yeshua said, unless I wash your feet. Okay. And Peter surrendered. Okay. But again, the whole hospitality thing. Come in, I can put you up, I have a place for you to sleep, I can take care of your camels. Okay. I can wash your car. Okay, I can do anything that you need for me to do to be hospitable to you. All right. Uh, and but they're saying also, um, 31. So he said, Come in, blessed of Adonai. Why are you standing outside when I've tidied up the house and there is room for your camels? He's typing. Is he preparing? Would he have some knowledge that, I mean, it would seem like all every step of the way things happened, like just like. When you have company, do you tidy up the house? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot. A lot. Okay. Most of us, yeah, you would have a tendency to maybe clean things that you hadn't cleaned in a while. Sure. Sure. When okay. they company, they tidy up my house. Yeah. <laughs> they throw down the plastic. Throw down the plastic runners. Or throw down the plastic. Yes, yeah, she. Something, her something, mother used to do. Yes, yeah, yeah. exclusive in the Middle East that we I experienced in different Middle Eastern countries is that especially um, like the, the, the Arab the Arab population like places they have a specific room in their house to entertain people. And that room is always ready. And I think that in the culture, even with tents, they have always been as part of who they are. Yep. Always have everything ready to serve people if people mm -hmm. came over. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a it's a mentality. It's not like us, like, oh, somebody's coming. I have nothing ready. Like they were always ready because it's part, it was very much part of their lives. I'm thinking of a Joan Rivers routine. She was. She oh, had she been sick. She had been no. She had people coming over all of a sudden. She yeah. hadn't cleaned. No, no, but she had been sick. She had been sick. And people had sent her get well cards right. like years before. Right. <laughs> and she had company coming over, so she took out all the cards. And put them up and put all on the mantle. And she said, said, so that he would forgive her. I'm so sorry. I've been sick. And <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I think I think of uh, Italians and especially my folks. Um, we had plastic runners on the carpets. Yeah. That protected the carpet. And when believe believe me, when somebody came to the front door, of which you had to really be company to come to the front door because everybody else came through the garage. But when the doorbell rang, we had plastic duty. My sisters and I. So when the doorbell rang and we knew it was somebody, it was not. We had to roll up the plastic, put it in the closet, and open the door. Hi. Excuse me, to you. So that, you know, in New York, everything was protected. This was Orthodox Italian. This was Orthodox yeah. Italian. <laughs> but this was, uh, but also in the living room. 
and the living room was never ever used. Everything no. there was covered in plastic. Yeah. 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 It's a museum. The, the, the dining room table that was adjacent to the living room was never used. Living room's company. It was right. never ever used. They, they, had a, they had a den, a seating room. They had the, the basement is where all the living took place. There was a kitchen in the basement. Okay, and that's where most most of the meals were had. Okay, it wasn't until my mother passed away that we we and everybody came back to the house after the funeral, and we opened up that dining room table which had <laughs> never had anything put on it, and we had all the food out there. We just broke it up. <laughs> well, poor folks don't have dens. Then we have a living room, <laughs> right? right. <laughs> okay, and we had a den. We used the living room. They had a yeah, yeah room, like a TV room. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, let's go on. So I'm um, I'm ending the 32 where it says, so he said speak. 32? Uh, 30, uh, I'm sorry. Okay, so 33. I'll make it 33. Food was placed before him to eat, but he said, I won't eat until I've stated my okay, business. Okay, so he's being righteous here. Okay, I'm not going to take advantage of your hospitality until you understand what I the business that I'm here for. Yes. Okay, because you may not agree with this. Go on. So and he, he was said, on a mission. And he was he on just, a mission. He just wanted to finish his mission for his master. Correct. And that loyalty is what we spoke about earlier, Anna. Okay, his lawyer loyalty to his master. Okay, go on. And the last sentence is so he said, speak. 34. I am Abraham's servant, he said. Adonai has blessed my master very much so that he has become great, and he has given to him flocks of sheep and cattle, silver and gold. Male slaves and female slaves, camels and donkeys. Okay, and again, every time we see the word slaves, in America, we think about American slavery. American slavery is not what these slaves were, okay? This was an abomination in this country, okay, completely. But here, a slave is somebody who probably, he might have been purchased, but at the same time, they were not treated as slaves. They were treated as employees. Hence, Eleazar, who was like a son to Abraham. And, and the word in Hebrew, Edom, is the same for slave and servant. And servant. So some translations will say slave, and then we have that kind of wrong connotation, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. But the, the word Edom means servant. Mm -hmm. well, they could have been in debt too, right? Or we could pay the they debt. could have been in debt, all right? Oh, and yes. given themselves as an employee because they had no other means of sustaining themselves. Go on. 36. <clears throat> now, Sarah, my master's wife, gave birth to a son for my master after she was old, and he gave him everything he owns. Then my master made me take an oath, saying, You must not take a wife for my son from among the daughters of the Canaanites in whose land I'm dwelling. Instead, you must go to my father's house and to my family and take a wife for my son. But I said to my master, Suppose the woman won't come back to, with, me, with me. She said, So he said to me, Adonai, before whom I've walked continually will send his angel with you and he will make your way successful and you will take a wife for my son, from my family and from my father's household. Then you'll be free from my oath. If you come to my family and if they don't give her to you, then you'll be free from my oath. So I came today to the spring and I said, and I said, Adonai, the God of Abraham, my master, if you are really going to make my way upon which I am walking successful, look, I'm standing by the spring of water. So let it be that the unmarried girl who is going out to draw water, to whom I'll say, please give me a little water to drink from your jug. And she'll say to me, you drink, and I'll also draw water for your camels. Let her be the woman whom Adonai appoints for my master's son. I had not yet finished speaking to my heart. And behold, there was Rebecca going out. Her jug was on her shoulder, and she went down to the spring and drew water. So I said to her, please give me a drink. And she quickly lowered her jug off of her and said, drink, and I'll also water your camels. So I drank, and she also watered the camels. Then I asked her, whose daughter are you? And she said, the daughter of Bethuel, Nahor's son, whom Melchah bore to him. Then I placed the ring on her nose and the bracelets on her hands. I bowed down and worshipped God and I, and blessed God and I, the God of my master, Abraham, who guided me on the true way to take the daughter of my master's brother for his son. So now, if you're really going to show loyalty and truth to the, my, my master, tell me. But if not, tell me, and I'll turn to the right or to the left. Okay. What was the significance of placing the earring in her nose? 
Just to drag her back with a rope or no. <laughs> when a slave decided after seven years that he and he was allowed to go free at that point. Okay, and but he decided there's no reason for me to do that. I'm loyal to my master. I'm going to uh I've got three meals a day, my family and everybody were happy doing what we're doing here. Everything is just fine. What then happened? They pierced. They he took it all and pierced, him, pierced his ears. I what had that they, happen they, they, to they, me in a service one time where the Lord, I could feel the Lord piercing my ear and meaning that I didn't want to walk away from him. I wanted to remain loyal to him. Amen. And mm -hmm. at that point, my ear was supernaturally pierced and I wow. shook my head and- uh, mm -hmm. you know, Amen. Very... Amen. So again, does that answer your question? Well, I said the nose, not the ear. Oh no, you're talking about Rebecca. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, I, as, as far as I understand, was a sign of that she was committed to somebody. Ah. Because even in it's like the, an engagement ring, yeah, it's like an engagement ring. It's it's a sign that uh, she was now committed Taken. to mm -hmm. spoken for. Yeah. No, okay. I, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> too late now. Okay. Anyway. okay. So okay, where were you? Fifty. Fifty. Then Laban and Bedwell answered, and they said, the matter proceeds from Adonai. We cannot speak to you bad or good. Rebecca is before you. Take her and go, and let her become a wife for our master's son, just as Adonai has spoken. Now, when Abraham's servant heard their words, he bowed down to the ground to Adonai. Then the servant brought out articles of silver and gold and garments and gave them to Rebecca. He also gave precious gifts to her brothers and to her mother. Then they ate and drank, he and the men who were with them, him, and spent the night. When they arose in the morning, he said, send me off to my master. But her brother with her mother said, let the young woman stay with us a few days or ten. A few days or ten, go ahead. Afterwards, she may go. <laughs> but he said to them, don't delay me, since Adonai has made my way successful. Send me off so that I can go to my master. So they said, we'll call the young woman and let's ask her her opinion. Stop. Let's ask her her opinion. Is that customary that they would do such a thing? All this time, everything is, you know, ordered. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, marriages are arranged. Had nothing to do with what you decided, but what your parents decided. Okay, all of a sudden now, let's ask her opinion. Well. What, Anna? What do you think? I don't know. Um... Isn't that unusual? I, yeah, it is. It is unusual. Normally, you just do what you're told to do because the marriage is is arranged. It's it's just very interesting. Um, I I I see uh, the enemy trying to delay Eliezer from finishing his mission and bringing Rebecca to her master to, to his master. Okay. Um, and and sometimes you know, distraction and delays can come in such a subtle way. And like, like that, like. Well, it's, that's a good point because it says, you know, let her stay a few days or 10. In other words, we're not in a big hurry to see our daughter go off because we may never see her again. And they just Amen? met him. And they just met him. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. But he's, he's brought all these gifts and everything with him. Right. And, um, but again, just as Anna said, this could be an additional way. In other words, uh Rebecca might say, uh, yeah, I'd be glad to go, but let me hang in for a few more days because I may not see my family again. Did they did they have a relationship with that or not? Do we know or not? Don't know. I mean, because he keeps on quoting just as 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 he's speaking, he says, just as yes. Adam and I said, well, Adam just and I, and they, I were, they all left there. with the family <laughs> with Abraham. The whore. Uh, Abraham's brother, they all left at the same time mm -hmm. and went with him, and then they all separated. separated. Okay. So, um, okay. So then they called Rebecca and said to her, Will you go with this man? And she said, I will go. So they sent Rebecca, their sister, off with her nanny, and Abraham's 
servant and his men, and they blessed Rebekah and said to her, Our sister, may you become thousands of ten thousands, and may your seed possess the gate of those who hate him. Then Rebekah got up with her okay, maid. What is that referring to? And and to see that God was in details to answer Abraham's prayers through through his servant, right? Amen. Like Paul, God that is your details. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and then I mean, the, this goes back to the your your offspring will be like the stars of the exactly. sky. And this is how yes. Yeah. 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 Precisely. Yeah. Okay, 61. Then Rebecca got up with her maids and they mounted the camels and followed after the man. So the servant took Rebecca and departed. Now Isaac had come from visiting Bear Lahai Roy and was living in the land of the Negev. Isaac went out to meditate, strolling in the field at dusk. Then he lifted up his eyes and saw, behold, camels were coming. Rebecca also lifted up her eyes and saw Isaac. Then she fell off her camel. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I would say, but I'm not. Yeah, he was a hunk. Yeah, that was a hunk. Oh, oh, oh. 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 He was a hunk. <laughs> no, but it, 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 the scene is it's so magical. <laughs> Oh, God. You see the two the commercials with two people running each other across the field, right? And then one. And then they go by. <laughs> no, but obviously this was a divine appointment. Point. Amen. Yeah. All right. Uh, he lifted up his eyes and saw behold camels. Rebecca also saw she saw him. She didn't see camels. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh Okay. She didn't even know it was him. She didn't know it was him, but she knew it was him. Did she literally fell off a camel? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, I think. <laughs> I like to ask think about the Okay, so uh, what could that mean? That she fell off camel? What's the implication of that? Or Does she it mean she that she literally fell? No, she, she could be exhausted yeah. from the trip. I or mean, she came quickly down to yeah, it. Quickly down. Down. Yeah. Yeah, kind of slid out of the saddle down, 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 down. Okay. Uh, mission fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, all right. Read on 65. Why she just embarrassed herself? <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> like, I, oh, I'm going to pull out the camel now so he'll come and rescue me. Okay. Then she said to the servant, Who is that man? there who was walking in the field to meet us. The servant said, he is my master. So she took the veil and covered herself. Then the servant recounted to Isaac uh, all the things he had done. Then Isaac brought her into the tent of Sarah, his mother, took Rebecca and she became his wife and he loved her. So Isaac was com confront comforted after the loss of his mother. Just like that, bang, 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 bang. Okay. <laughs> from the camel, from falling off the camel to the tent. Okay. Get yourself a and, camel and fall. Little no, Davy. <laughs> yeah, right. And did and didn't this say? I don't know. Twenty-four. I Twenty-four. Well, you're the Navi. <laughs> yeah, verse twenty-four says you know, the courting of Rebecca. Mm -hmm. Where's the point? I thinking, That's the name she, of the, the passage. Twenty-four. The she chapter twenty-four. Was the camera was she was not to be above her husband, and she, she when she came up when she was on the cam on the um, a animal she was up higher than her husband, and she had to come down to be below his height, yeah, even yeah. with him. Is like a custom thought. No, I don't that's know. It's a good thought. thought. I'm, I'm getting it's a thought, but I don't know. Right. It right. But again, what does it say, the very last line? Um, in 67? Yeah, the last line. Okay, yep. the last line. Um, okay, and he loved her. So Isaac was comforted after the loss of his mother. I, and before that, 67, Isaac brought her into the tent of, of, his, of Sarah, his mother. Okay, again... What is the implication of that? He is reflecting on the greatness of his mother. And now he has a bride who could also reflect 
the character. That mm -hmm. character. But he also say, the scriptures that the, the husband is to leave the mother, to leave the family and become one with his wife. Yes. But he was respect also. Right. But he was again this right to the end pours out the respect that he had for his mother. Okay, which again, as you were saying earlier, Perone, is that a lot of kids growing up don't have that respect. Okay, and maybe somewhere, hopefully along the line. You discover, oh, my parents knew what they were talking about. Called well, trial and error. It's the road to becoming a man. The road to becoming a man. And then just keep in mind, in the culture to this day, you don't get married and go live someplace else. You still live around family. You still around. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them, they live on the same lot, the same building, just different apartments or different. But they like it's when we talk about leaving your father and your mother. It's, it's just because right now you're not a baby anymore. You're the men of the house to take your responsibility, to take care of your, your wife and your children. What it changes is the responsibility level and, and the maturity level, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean like that they're going to just go away and, you know, they're still, they're still caring for their parents. They're still caring for the properties. They're still caring for everything that the family built. That it's very much the culture. When <laughs> we are completely opposite. Yeah. You know? When we in the service, in the liturgical part of the service, we invite the children to come up and stand under the chuppah, right? In, in essence, what is the chuppah? Protection. Uh, it, it is protection, but it is the prayer shawl, right? Mm -hmm. The prayer shawl is stretched out between four poles. It is the covering, the, the, the talit. It is the talit. And what's on the four corners of the talit? CCs. Okay. CCs are the, the prayer shawl is essentially the thing that carries the CC, which is what's important about all of that. But how does that enter into the whole idea of marriage? Okay. When a couple is married, they're married under a chuppah, under the chuppah. Okay. And so the, the groom goes and in my house, there are many rooms. Ah, so the groom goes and builds a, a room next to his father's house. And then when the room is ready, he goes and takes his bride and escorts her. He steps into the house and then reaches back and takes the bride and takes her into the house under the hook. Wow. Wow. The betrothal is the first yeah. part of the marriage ceremony. Yes. And if nothing happens between them, they don't come together yet until they bring her to the house. That's right. That's what happened to Ryan and I. We had our betrothal in Jerusalem on June 15th and we kept ourselves apart. I flew here to prepare for the wedding. He flew here the week before the wedding. We got <laughs> married under the and then our marriage was constantly. Where was the wedding? Anna? Uh, but, you know, oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Adrian and I did the same thing. Yes. We were with Frederick and then married uh, a couple months later. Amen. We separated this year. All right. Guys, any questions about Chaye Sarah? Uh, just a comment because seeing that it's the the focus of the this particular um, text. I see Sarah in everything that I've read because she imparted, her, you know, somewhere in Proverbs it says not to forget the teachings of your mother. Mm -hmm. She imparted some godly principles in mm -hmm. him and that it, it, in, inside of him, he probably wanted a woman just like his mother. Always. And um, Always. said that he was comforted at the, here and then out of respect i put here um i um now sarah my master's wife gave birth to a son of my master even acknowledging sarah in as i'm rereading it through her her um contribution so to she say present throughout this whole project right, right. <laughs> and, even after her death right so yeah. it's, it's interesting he's, he's um he loved his wife and so Typically, how a a man treats his wife is how he related to his mother. So he must have loved Sarah too. 
and that flowed to Rebecca. So that's really beautiful that he got Amen. Amen. So it's a great segue for for single people. It's like a great thing for you know. Yeah, it is. That's single a, people. Yes, that's a great message for single people. There, there is a lot in the parasha. This parasha, it's a really rich parasha. Um, we I actually spent a lot of time thinking about the burial place that Abraham bought. Machpela. Machpela, <laughs> right? And and the significance of him buying on that land in Hebron, paying four hundred shekels of silver, which was way over the price. And then I discovered there were some really interesting things about it. Apparently, there was a legend that linked that place, that cave specifically, with the Garden of Eden somehow. So my kids this whole week, they've been talking about like this, how this cave had a portal to the Garden of Eden. (laughs) (laughs) Such a fun time just kind of trying to, you know, discuss it. And uh, it was, was really interesting. But also the fact that even though God told Abraham that that was all his land. And then I asked my kids, like, why do you think he paid for it then? He, he could just say, they were, God gave it to me, you know. But but my son said, but Abraham was an honorable man, mom. And he did what was right. And right. he even paid more than he should pay because he wanted to conquer the land for the next generations, but he did it the right way. Not forcing, not saying God gave to me, you know, but he was a righteous man. The guy said you it's worth 400 shekels, but for you it's free. But he all he did was count out the 400 shekels. Mm-hmm. But there's okay. just a lot of good things. A lot of good things. Hey, before we pray, announcements. Okay, specifically, well, next Thursday, obviously we're well, not next Saturday, we're on vacation, so there's no totally tasting. No totally tasting next Saturday. Okay, but next Thursday, if you're involved with prayer time, okay, uh, that is obviously Thanksgiving. We will not need that prayer time as well. Okay, um, anything else? That's it. Abba, we just praise thank you and you. thank you for who you are. We thank you for people healing, Lord. We thank you for your Ruach that pours into us, Lord, and helps us to have a deeper understanding of the character and how you arranged everything through this whole process of sanctification. Be ye holy as I am holy. We just lift you up and thank you. We ask again for your blessings on this service that we do as unto you, every aspect of what we do. The word, the music, the uh, technology, everything that we do, Lord, you are completely and 100% in control. We thank you for the people who are meeting here both live and virtually as far away as from Wisconsin. Lord, so we just lift you up and we thank you and we praise you and give you the glory in Yeshua's name. Amen. 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 Oh,